Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's talk about putting a web interface on a Linux server. Now, this is already something I know there's going to be at least a few comments down below by some salty sysadmins who think that Linux should never have a web interface, but their interests are not aligned with mine. I believe using a web interface can help people who are new to Linux get started with it, get started with managing it, and also help people that are more casual users and don't plan to do this full-time for a living manage some of the internal servers in their home lab or just systems they may have that they are responsible for administering for. This is a tool that makes it easier for them to use. Therefore, I think it is a good thing. Now, if you want to do a professional sysadmin job and do this for a living, yeah, you eventually wander your way into learning the command line, which then brings you up to automation tools. There's a little confusion when I've talked about this when I did my 45 drives review and the fact that they use the cockpit web interface and people ask, well, is this the same as Ansible? Very different topic. Ansible is a great tool for doing automation. I will leave links to videos I've done below and videos over at learnlinux.tv on that subject as well and talking about process automation. This is not process automation or Linux sysadmin automation. This is all about just having a easier web interface to get some functions done. And if you're unfamiliar with doing those functions from the command line, or sometimes if there are functions you don't do very often, these web interfaces can be really helpful. And the first one we're going to talk about is Cockpit. This is the one I reviewed when I was talking about the 45 drive server and just like it says here, it is the easy to use, integrated, glanceable, and open web-based interface for your servers. It's actually a really nice system. I do like Cockpit. It's rather basic. It is available on Fedora, Red Hat, CoreOS, Atomic, CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Clear Linux, Arch Linux, and more. Pretty straightforward to install. And actually for a lot of systems, it'll be right in the repository and can just be quickly installed. Now let's talk about what it looks like. The cockpit system over here, here's the overview of it. This is the one running on 45 drives. And these are a couple specific extensions that I thought was cool that 45 drives added to this. Now, the nice thing is because you can add more modules to cockpit, it's relatively extensible for going in and going, hey, let's write a module for adding the disk manager or adding a motherboard manager, a couple things that 45 drives did. But this is all open source, not only the cockpit project, but the work being done by 45 drives. And they added this ZFS module. If you are a Linux admin and you've had to deal with lots of drives and lots of ZFS, well, you're probably happy to have something like this. And because this particular system has 30 drives in it set up with a RAID Z2 and several different pairings in here managing those drives from here as opposed to learning all the zpool commands which you may not use very often because you hopefully will never have to replace a drive because you're hoping they don't fail but if they do scrambling to remember commands or just going hey I can click the three dots and offline clear disk error or hit replace disk yeah, it's a good reason frequently to use a web interface on top of this. I went over here and loaded Cockpit on this Ubuntu install. And to give you an idea that, it, yes, you can just throw the ZFS module from 45 drives, which I'll leave a link to their GitHub. And you just copy the module in there. They have instructions. And now I have it on this system, completely unrelated to 45 drives. This is a nice feature being able to go through add a couple modules as needed. There's a handful of them out there on GitHub for some specialized projects to extend the features that you have, such as some virtual machine management, account settings in here, also services. This can be really confusing for some people when you're first starting with Linux, and you're maybe used to, if you came from the Windows world, the Microsoft services list. And it works very much the same in Linux, but doing it off in the command line, listing out the services when you first start can be challenging. Going through here and go, hey, I just want to see system services running and let's filter for one like SSH. All right. This one's active and running and reload, restart or stop it, disallow or uh, start and stop disable right here. I can just slide a little bar. These things can be very helpful because you may not have remembered the name of the command exactly to get this started. And this is where I think this is doing people a big favor for, well, when you don't do this very often, this puts a really easy way to do it. And yes, it even supports doing software updates right through this. But you're doing, when you use Cockpit, everything the same as it is from the command line. It's pushing those commands through the command line on the back end. And Cockpit itself does not have a web back end configuration for all of this. I bring that up like that because it's a little bit different than the way the other service we're going to talk about, Webmin, works. Cockpit doesn't have its own deep configuration files. It reads everything on the fly from the services that are running. 
So if I start and stop a service or disable a service, when it goes back and reads this, there's not separate files. It's reading in real time and writing in real time as you submit changes right to the back end system on there. So you can actually easily go back and forth changing things from the command line or through the web interface, and it's one and the same. It's really nice the way that works. Now let's talk about Webmin. Webmin is a web-based interface for system administration for Unix using any modern web browser. You can set up your accounts, Apache DNS, file sharing, and much more. Now, Webmin's been around for a long time. I remember using it a long time ago when I did a lot of mail server administration. One of the things that Webmin has a lot of, and by the way, they can coexist on the same system. Here's that same server, that same Ubuntu server, also running Webmin as it's running Cockpit. And Webmin has a pretty long list of features in terms of modules it has and configuration support for things like Apache, for things like database management, for syslog management. It's really extensive what they've built into here. Now, Webmin does have its own configuration, and this is where I will agree a little bit with some of the sysadmins. When it writes out some of these configurations, it may not write them exactly in the cleanest format, that's a problem I haven't looked at because I haven't used it in a long time. But I know in the early days, the way it created, for example, some of the Apache virtual hosts, which it's really nice that they go here and go to servers. And there's our Apache web servers. We can go through and look at each module in there. But I'll admit, when it writes these out, it has no problem reading standard ones. But when it starts writing them out, they can be a little bit confusing when you go back to the command line and look at it. Webmin itself also has lots of configuration options. It's all written in Perl. And there will be some people that point out, hasn't Webmin had a few flaws and bugs? Yes. Both Cockpit and Webmin should never be publicly exposed over the internet. They are a high-powered management control plane that should be treated as such. That being said, if they are on your general network, and sometimes there has been flaws in the Webmin project, a few, partly because of its age and how long it's been written. And, well, when you write code long enough and write extensive modules like this, there's bound to be flaws. So, yes, this should be absolutely protected and treated as such because sometimes there are flaws, but those flaws do require people's access to get to them. That being said, there's unfortunately, if you check Shodan, probably way too many Webmin systems exposed online. That's not a good idea. Hopefully, you're not among the people who have done that. Another thing that's nice is like Samba file sharing. Now, this is something that's in both the cockpit with the ZFS manager from 45 drives, and it has a module here that also offers things like Windows, Unix, and printing, miscellaneous options, WinBind options, file share options. These are a lot of nice things because if you don't know all the commands to build a share, this can be helpful to create a new share and then start going and all right, check these boxes. Or if we look at the printer share that we have right here, there's the share name or all printer share, units print, spool directory, yes, no options on there, view connections. I mean, these are all things you can do from the command line, but sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. Same with setting up users, guests, things like that. Now, not just for printers, of course, but for the shares themselves that can all be done all within this module, such as we can go right here, create a new file share, pick the share name, the directory to share, and being able to go through and say, all right, we want to share something like out of home. Hey, there's our LTS. Hit select. Hit create. And, well, I forgot to write a valid share name, but you get the idea that it's pretty easy to. There we go. Now we've created an extra share name. Uh, but the other nice thing about this is when you're going through some of the options, like some of the networking options, other options, there may not be, it may not be easy for people to remember all of the different options in here, but putting a web interface on that can make it a little bit easier to get going and learn these. And the nice thing is you can go look at the files and set up it create. So you can go through from the command line and read these and go, okay, that's how it created these options. And I don't know, I think it's a good back and forth for learning. Now, one other module that is also a point of confusion many times in Linux is learning how some of the firewall works. Both Cockpit and Webmin have options for this to allow you to go through and build some of the rules. But always be careful because obviously one of the rules you need to make sure is in here is the access to either Cockpit or Webmin and whatever port they're running on. Webmin by default is on port 10,000 and Cockpit is on port 9090 by default. So as long as you do, don't lock yourself out from those, it's kind of a good way to start learning and playing with the firewall and then maybe going back to command line and learning more. Now, I have a more in-depth video where I dive deeper into some of the features of Webmin. And like I said, I'll leave links to the other videos like the 45 Drives video where I talk a little bit about the way they use Cockpit and the modules. And it's an overall review of the 45 Drives platform. But I know 
know some people are kind of interested in, you know, why they're using a web interface. And these are the web interfaces I wanted to talk about. Well, the cockpit one that they're using or the Webmin one, because I think it's another system that is really helpful to get people started on there. I'll leave links to the other videos that I mentioned below. And thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.